Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. Adding a border to your crochet project can take it from meh to marvelous. In today's video, I'm sharing five of my favorite border stitch patterns that I've used in past TL Yarn Crafts designs. If you're down to stitch with me today, be sure to like this video and stick around for these fun patterns. Now before we dive in, we do have some bills to pay, starting with today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Hey honeybees, so you've heard me talk about Skillshare before and it's honestly because I cannot get enough. If you don't know already, Skillshare is a learning platform for the curious and the creative. Whether you're a self-taught learner, a career changer, or an expert side hustler, Skillshare has the classes to get you closer to your goals. Now speaking of goals, one of mine is to get more at home here in my space through some expert interior design. Now you can ask my mom, I am hopeless when it comes to interior design. I think I know what I like, but I have no idea how it all goes together. But that's where stylist and author Emily Henderson comes in. With nearly a million followers on Instagram, Emily knows a thing or two about interior design. She's distilling down over 15 years of design experience into a class called Style Your Space, Creative Tips and Techniques for Interior Design. Emily's kindness and positivity spill out of the screen, making me feel more empowered to find treasures around my own home. The real gem of this course is the design quiz, where you pick your preferences from a series series of slides, and then Emily gives you the frame of reference for your style. Now I got mostly Fs, which is the Scandinavian style, you know, clean lines, light woods, warm touches, all with this minimalist outlook. Now that definitely fits me to a T. My personal office is more of a boho style, but thanks to Emily's class on Skillshare, I feel really good about finding the intersection between those two styles. Skillshare is a truly invaluable resource for sparking your curiosity and reigniting the flames of your imagination. Imagination. And now is the best time to invest in yourself with a Skillshare membership. Skillshare has been kind enough to offer their platform to the TL Yarn Crafts family. The first 1,000 friends to click the link down in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Head down to that link to join now. And we can't pick up our hooks without showing some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. And today's sponsor is Miriam. When donating, Miriam said, chronic pain led to losing my crojo. After spine surgery in April, I wasn't able to crochet, but reading and watching Crochet Academy brought me so much joy. I'm improving and now working on the Ada shawl. Thank you for bringing so much joy and comfort during my hardest days. I'm so glad to hear that my channel can encourage you during this time of healing, Miriam. Take it easy, stay hydrated, and be sure to share that Ada shawl with me. Now, if you enjoy my content and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows, I might shout you out in my next video. For this video, I'm using a DK weight yarn and a 5mm crochet hook, unless otherwise stated. Now, let's get stitching. Our first stitch pattern is the Pico, which I use for my cadenza wrap. This simple border is great for beginners and adds a nice finish to any project. To start my Pico border, I'm going to join with a standing single crochet. Make a slip knot, place it on your hook, and tighten down. I'm going to place my Pico in the center most double crochet of each of my clusters, so I need to join with a standing single crochet in the rightmost double crochet of this cluster. So I've got my slip knot on my hook. I'm going to now insert under both loops of that stitch where I plan to join, yarn over, pull up the loop. I now have two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through those loops for a standing single crochet. Now I'm placing my Pico in my next stitch, so I'm going to single crochet here, and now I'm going to place my Pico. To do that, I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to make a slip stitch, but where you place your slip stitch is very important. I'm going to grab the front loop of this stitch and the left loop of the post here. So insert and insert, yarn over, pull through, and then I like to grab the three chains that I made, which makes it easier to slip stitch through the loop that's on my hook. The reason I grab these two loops here on the front of the stitch is because it makes sure there are no holes or gaps around my Pico. Now I'm gonna single crochet in each stitch to the next stitch of my Pico. So single crochet here, single crochet in the next stitch. Pico's going in the next stitch, so it starts with a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to dip my hook down into the front loop and this left loop of that single crochet stitch and grab both of those, yarn over, pull through those, 
Grab your three chains and pull through for your pico. Single in the next several stitches. There's two and three. Pico is going here. Chain three, one, two, three. Find the front loop of that single crochet and the left bar. Front loop, left bar. And pull through for your slip stitch. Let's proceed to the corner. Here in my corner, I'm just gonna single crochet, chain one, and single crochet again. So here's what my picots look like so far. Now I'll continue around my square and show you the result. And that, my friends, is how you make a gorgeous pico border. Now this is a favorite of mine for anything that needs a delicate touch, or if you're low on your contrast yarn, maybe you come to the end of your project and you only have a little bit left to use for a border, this little border goes a very long way. And we only use a few stitches, single crochet, slip stitch, and chain to make this really gorgeous border that works for just about anything. Our next stitch pattern is the linen stitch border, which I use on my linen pixel temperature blanket. Try out this option if you need to use up some yarn or want to add more color to your project. For our linen stitch border, we'll need a few different colors. I like to use the same color as the project for my base color and then add in a couple accents. Also, we've been using a five millimeter hook for our tutorial so far. For the linen stitch border, I recommend going up one full millimeter. So I'm going up to a six millimeter for our border. Reason being is that we're separating our stitches with chains, which are not quite as wide as our actual stitches. So going up on the hook size is going to make sure our border doesn't buckle too much, but we'll probably still need to block this at the end. Let's get started. We'll use this base color to lay the foundation of our linen stitch border. So this will be round one of our border. We'll join with a standing single crochet. So I'll make a slip knot, place that on my hook, and I'm going to start in the corner. So here in my corner, I'm going to place a standing single crochet. Slip knot is on my hook, insert into the chain space of my corner, yarn over and pull up the loop, then yarn over and pull through those last two loops to make my standing single crochet. Now I want to work in my linen stitch pattern. So we follow single crochets with a chain one, keep those chains loose, and I'm gonna skip this very first double crochet here. Now I'll single in my next double crochet. Chain one, skip one, single in the next. Chain one, skip one, single in the next. And we'll repeat that until we get to our next corner. Chain one, skip one, single in the next. Keeping our gauge loose. So I've placed a single crochet here, I've chained one, I'll skip the next stitch, which is this double crochet, and now I'm at the corner. For the corner, I'm gonna place a single crochet, chain two, and another single crochet, all in the same space. Now I can turn my work, chain one, and continue with my linen stitch pattern, skipping this double crochet, placing a single in the following. And we'll repeat that all the way around. Join with a slip stitch in your first stitch of the round, and then we can fasten off and add one of our accent colors. The first round of our border is complete and we have our two tails here. I'm going to join in the corner, but I don't like to join in the same corner each time. So I'm just gonna rotate this and join in my next color, grabbing one of my accents. I'm gonna join again with a standing single crochet. So I'm making a slip knot, placing that on my hook. And now I can go into my chain two corner here. I'm gonna join with a standing single crochet, slip knot is on the hook, insert into the chain two space, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
then yarn over and pull through two to complete. Now we'll jump right into our linen stitch pattern. So from that standing single crochet, I'm going to chain one. I then skip the next single crochet and I'm gonna single crochet into the chain one space. Just like that. Chain one, single in the next space. Chain one, single in the next space. And we'll repeat that until we get to the corner. Make sure you keep your gauge relatively loose here. The linen stitch tends to buckle and shrink a bit. So a looser gauge is gonna help this lay flatter. Single in the space, chain one, single in the space, chain one. Now I'm at my corner, my chain two space here. I'm gonna single in the corner, chain two, and single in the corner again. So I'm gonna repeat this around. I'll follow this with a chain one, single in the next space, chain one, single in the next space. Repeat that around. When we finish the round, we'll join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet, fasten off, and then we'll go back to our base color. Second round is done, and as you can see, our corners are starting to curl in. It's just the nature of our linen stitch. Our gauge is fine, and this will block beautifully, but just make sure you size up your hook before you start that border. Now we can go on to round three, which again, we want to use our base color for. So again, I'm gonna join with a standing single crochet. And I don't want to join in the same corner where I started, so I'm going to rotate to this corner. Slip knot goes onto my hook, joining in the chain two space with a standing single crochet, chain one, and now I'm going to single crochet in the next space, chain one, single in the next space, chain one. So jumping right back into my linen stitch pattern, keeping my gauge loose, and to help me keep that gauge loose, I don't pull on my working yarn when I complete any of my stitches, my single crochets or my chains. So we can see already that beautiful linen stitch pattern starting to emerge. And with that accent color, we get a beautiful contrast against the base. So I'm gonna continue around. I'm gonna do a round of my base color. Then I'm gonna do a round of this second accent and a final round in my base color. And I'll show you how that turns out. Immediately after finishing my border, it looks like this. So we can see that beautiful linen stitch border. Those accents are cradled by the color of our main color. But if I try and lay this flat, you'll see that the center is poofy and the outside is buckling. Again, that is because of the gauge and tension of that linen stitch square. To fix that, we are going to block our square. So let me do that super quick. After a quick steam block and an air dry, you can see that our square is laying completely flat and our border still looks wonderful. I absolutely love the linen stitch. I think it has a beautiful unisex look to it. It's great if you're using multiple colors in your project and you wanna make sure those colors are represented in the border as well. It's also quite simple. We only use a single crochet and a chain to make this border, but it's really a matter of how you lay out your colors. You can box in your colors the way that I did by alternating an accent and your main color, or you can do multiple rounds of just your accents and really get a beautiful kind of zippered look to your border. So definitely make sure you try out this linen stitch border. 
Next up, we have the Little Ridges border, which complemented my Daphne afghan perfectly. By stitching different heights of stitches, you get a border that looks a little like marshmallow clouds. For our next stitch, I have this nice contrasting color and I've gone back to my five millimeter hook. This stitch pattern is worked over two rows. First is a setup row worked with the right side of our work facing. And then we have our border row, which is worked on the wrong side. So let's do the right side first. I've got my contrast color here. I'm going to make a slip knot, place that on my hook. And as starting in the corner, I'm going to do a standing single crochet. Slip knot is on the hook. I'm going to insert into the corner, yarn over the hook, and pull up the loop. Two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through those final two loops for a standing single crochet. I'm now going to single crochet in each stitch across the row until I get to my next corner. So just regular old single crochets, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, then yarn over, pull through the last two loops to complete the stitch all the way until we make it to the corner. One more stitch, and now we're at our corner. We need to single crochet, chain two, and single crochet again in our corner. After you make the corner, we'll jump right back into our single crochet stitches, and we'll do that for each side of our square. Join me back here when you get to your final corner. We'll finish up that corner together and then start the next round of our border. Just a few more single crochets here, and now I'm at my corner. Remember when we started, we put a standing single crochet in this corner, but we do need to complete the corner. So I'll place a single crochet there followed by two chains, and then I can slip stitch in that first single crochet of the round. So just going under both loops of that single crochet and pulling through for a slip stitch. Now I'm going to rotate my work so I can work on the wrong side. I'm gonna rotate it counterclockwise towards me. You can see that my working yarn is still in the front, but it does open me up to this chain two space we just made right here. I'm gonna dip my hook down into that space yarn over the hook, and pull through for a slip stitch. Now I'm going to slip stitch in the next stitch as well, and follow that with a double crochet. Slip stitch in the next stitch, insert under both loops, yarn over, pull up the loop, and pull through the remaining loop that's on the hook. Double crochet in the following stitch, yarn over the hook, insert into the stitch, yarn over and pull up the loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. Slip in the next stitch, double in the following. Slip in the next stitch, double in the following. And we'll repeat that across the row until we get to a corner. But before that happens, I wanna give you a look at the effect that we're getting here. You can see these nice little bumps, these textured bumps now on the front of the work. I love the look of these. They look like little pink marshmallows to me, but they give this sweet little cloud look because those double crochets, since they're so much taller than the slip stitches, are getting pushed to this side of the work. So that's how we get that beautiful texture from the border and also this nice kind of peak and valley look here at the top. So let's continue in pattern until we get to the corner. So I have another single crochet here before I get to my corner. So I'll place a slip stitch there. And now I'm at my chain two space of my corner. I'm going to double crochet, slip stitch, and double crochet again here. There we go. So now I can rotate to work along my next edge. And my first stitch here is gonna get a slip stitch followed by a double crochet in the next stitch, slip stitch in the next, double crochet in the following, 
and we'll repeat that around until we get to the end of our row, which we will do together. So continue on and meet me at the end of the round. Nearly at the end of my round here, I have a slip stitch that needs to go here, a double crochet that needs to go here, and a slip stitch in the very last stitch of the round. Now I'm back at my corner. We already have a slip stitch there, so we're going to slip into the corner and double crochet into the corner. Just like that. Now we're going to slip stitch in these two, two little loops that are facing us. Yarn over, pull through to slip, and then we can fasten off and admire our work. I absolutely love this little ridges border because it gives this really nice definition around the work. And you can see in this contrast color, it really does exactly what a border is meant to do. It finishes off the work, it introduces a slightly different stitch pattern, it gives this nice color and just a nice line of definition. It's also incredibly simple, worked in slip stitches and double crochets, and we still get this beautiful definition in the corners. So make sure you try out the Little Ridges border pattern. Here comes the camel stitch border, another colorful option that's great for using up leftovers. I use it on my gumball afghan, adding a playful frame to this fun project. For our next stitch pattern, I'm using a five millimeter hook and then I'm gonna need the same color as my base as well as however many accents you want. You can really go nuts with this stitch pattern, but I'm just gonna show you two accents. You'll see in a minute why you can really get nuts with this because you can add as many colors as you want to, but we're just gonna use these three. I'm starting off with my base color. I'm gonna make a slip knot and then with the right side of my work facing, I'm gonna join with a standing half double crochet. So to do that, I'm going to place the slip knot on my hook, yarn over my hook and then hold on to that yarn over. I'm then gonna go into my corner, insert into the corner, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops to complete the standing half double crochet. And then I just need to half double crochet in each stitch across the row. So half double here, half double in the next stitch, that's a yarn over, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops to complete a half double crochet. And we'll do that all the way until we get to the corner. So now we're at our corner, which is right here, and I'm just gonna place three half double crochet here. There's one, two, and three. We will need to find the center half double crochet of these three, so you can place a stitch marker there if you need to. I'm just gonna continue on. So now that I've worked the corner, I'm gonna half double crochet in each stitch around, placing three half double crochet in the corner, Meet me at the end of the round and I'll show you how we'll change colors and move on to the next row. Just a few stitches left, half double crochets going into each, and now I'm at my corner. So we already placed one standing half double crochet here. We'll need to put two more half double crochet in that corner to complete it. So there's one, and there's two. I'll join with a slip stitch into that first half double crochet of the round and then I can fasten off. Now we're ready to add our second color. And I do like to join in a different corner than where I stopped, so I'm gonna go right here. With my new color, I'm gonna make a slip knot, place it on the hook. Now we need to find the third of those three half double crochet from the corner. Here's one, two, and three. So the second one is right here. Now we need to identify the loops of this stitch because we need to find the third loop. So we have a front loop here. Directly behind that is the back loop. And then for a half double crochet, directly behind the back loop, we have the third loop. So again, here's the front of the stitch right here. Front loop, back loop, third loop. We're going to join in the third loop and work in the third loop throughout. Slip knot is on my hook, yarn over, 
Again, find that center stitch of those three half double crochet, front, back, third loop. I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook under the third loop of that stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops to complete the half double crochet. And now I'm gonna do that for each stitch up to the next corner. So I'm bending my work towards me to expose those third loops right there. So the third loop rests right behind the back loop. So half double crochet in the third loop of each of those stitches. And you'll see what it does is it bends the front and back loop of the previous row forward. So we get this nice row of V's and this is how we create our camel stitch. So I'm gonna do this until we get to the corner. I'm approaching my corner, and again, I chose not to use stitch markers, but you certainly can. I'll find those three half double crochet here in the corner. This one is my middle one, so I need to work one more half double crochet before my corner. Corner is going here, and I'm just gonna place three half double crochet into the third loop of that corner stitch, just like that. Now I'm gonna continue this around, and just like on the previous round, I'll finish my corner, and then I'll be ready to change color again. I'm nearing the end of my first round. I'm back at my corner with my first standing half double crochet. I do need to place two more half double crochet into that stitch to complete the corner and then slip stitch into my first half double crochet to finish the round. I'm gonna now fasten off and I am done with this color. I'm gonna pull up that loop and again swap to another corner to join. And now I'm gonna join my next color right here. Again, grabbing that next color, I'll place a slip knot on the hook find those three half double crochet. Then we need to find the one in the middle, which is here, and the third loop of that stitch. So now I'm going to yarn over my hook, insert it into that third loop, complete a standing half double crochet to start the round. And now, just like the previous round, I'm going to half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch around. And once again, by working in that third loop, it pushes the front and back loop forward. So we get this nice kind of stacked set of V's happening here. So I'll continue this around just like the previous round, putting three half double crochet in the corners and joining with the slip stitch to finish the round. Work on this round, join me at the very end. We'll change color once more to our main color and I'll show you how we end our camel stitch border. Nearly done with this round. Just got a few more half double crochets to place here. And in my corner stitch, I need to place two more. There's one, there's two, and we'll join with a slip stitch. Fasten off that color, pull that loop up. We can see that beautiful, oh my gosh, this stitch is just so good, but we're not quite done yet because we need to deal with this. Now you could leave it here, but you have all the height of that half double crochet. What I want to do is bring this together so you have a nice finished edge here. So I'm going to grab another corner. Now for my final round, I'm gonna grab my main color or my base color, and then I'll need to find any stitch around here. We don't need to worry about the corners anymore, so I'm just gonna insert in the third loop of any stitch here. Yarn over the hook, pull up the loop. I'm gonna chain one and slip stitch in this same stitch, just like that. And I'm going to slip stitch in each third loop around the work. Just a cute little slip stitch, keeping them relatively loose so they don't bunch up on us. Insert, yarn over, pull through the stitch, pull through the loop. Slip stitch around, and what that does is it's going to push that third round of stitches down onto the second round and also give us a clean row of slip stitches here at the top of our work. So again, I'm just gonna slip stitch in each stitch around 
You don't need to do any increases at your corners like we've been doing before. Just slip stitch in the third loop of each stitch around to finish up. Join me in that very last corner. I'll show you how we'll join and fasten off and get a final look at our camel stitch border. Just a few stitches left here. One more. Perfect. So to finish off this round, I'm going to fasten off here before I even join with my slip stitch. Then I'll grab my tapestry needle and we're gonna join invisibly here. So I'm going to find my next stitch, the front and back loop of that slip stitch. I'm gonna slip under those, give it a nice tug and slip through just the back loop of this stitch that I came out of. So that was my last slip stitch. You can see when I wiggle that a little, we've got a nice clean edge there. And then I can just weave in these two ends. Since this is my main color, I'm gonna track back down to my main color to weave in that end. Because we always want to weave into like colors. Now we can fasten off. And just like before, we can see that our border is cupping a little bit while our square is laying flat. So again, we're going to block this one. This time I'm going to lay my square face down, grab my pins and put them in the corners. And after just a few minutes, I can take my pins out and admire my beautiful square because look at that camel stitch border. Oh, this is the one that just, it just sends me. It's just so gorgeous. And this works well for anything. You could put this on the cuff of a top or even the bottom at some of some cute little shorts. You can put this on a blanket. You could put this on a shawl. You could put this anywhere. If you've got leftovers of the colors you use in your project, throw them in here just like I did with my gumball afghan. That was the idea. No yarn left behind. Okay. So make sure you give that camel stitch border a try. It is truly gorgeous. Finally, we have the Tide Loops Border, a unique 3D stitch pattern that adds whimsy to my Sylvie shawl. How can a simple set of chain loops make this adorable border? Let's find out. For this fifth and final border stitch pattern, it helps to do a little bit of planning. So you'll notice that I evenly space some stitch markers around. So those markers will indicate where I want to put my loops. Based on your project, you'll want to space out your loops however you like. So for this sample, I'm gonna put loops at each of my markers as well as my corners. Now let's get started. I've got my five millimeter hook and my accent color here. And I'm gonna be joining with a standing single crochet. So I'm gonna place the slip knot on my hook. And for this, you can join in any place. We're just making single crochets and chains, so it doesn't have to start in a corner. I'm actually gonna start right down here. So I'm just gonna grab a stitch, insert under two loops of that stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, then yarn over and pull through those two loops to complete a standing single crochet. From there, I'm going to single crochet to my next marked stitch which is here. I'm going to single crochet into that marked stitch and then I'm going to chain 25. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, two, three, four, and five. So those are my chain loops. 
25 nice even chains. Now I'm gonna jump back into my work. I single crocheted into my marked stitch, so now I'm gonna single crochet into my next stitch. Oop, don't lose it now. There we go. So that creates my first loop. Now I'm going to single crochet to my corner. And here we are at the corner. I'm gonna single crochet in the corner, chain 25. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, one, two, three, four, and five. And now I'm gonna single crochet back into my corner, just like that. So we're gonna repeat these steps around. I'm gonna single crochet in each stitch to my next marked stitch. Once I get to my marked stitch, I'll single crochet into that stitch, chain 25, two, three, four, and five. Whew. And now I'll single crochet into the next stitch. So at each marker, I'll single crochet in the marked stitch, chain 25, and then single crochet in the following stitch. For my corners, I single crochet in the corner, chain 25, single crochet in the corner again. We're gonna repeat this around. Join me when you finish your round and I'll show you how to start the next one. Couple more single crochets to finish this round. Now I'm back where I started. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch into that first single crochet, just like that. So this is what we've got so far, a bunch of chain loops. It obviously doesn't look like anything right now, but I can take out my stitch markers before I start my next round. With all my stitch markers out, I can continue on for my last two rounds and they're both worked the same way. So starting from the slip knot to join the round, I'll chain one, single crochet in the same stitch as the join, and in each single crochet to my chain space. So just placing single crochets in each of my single crochet stitches. Now when I reach my space, I need to create another space. So I'm going to chain 25. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, one, two, three, four, and five. And now jumping right back into it, I'm gonna single crochet into the next single crochet stitch. So this was my space. Here's my next stitch. I'm going directly into that next stitch. So my chain spaces are now stacked on top of one another. And I'll single crochet to the next space which is here at my corner. Make sure you single crochet into each single crochet stitch, chain 25. And skipping the space, we'll single crochet into the next single crochet stitch. Just like that single in each. And we'll repeat that around until we get to the end of the round, which is here. <laughs> when you get to the end of the round, you'll join, chain up one, single crochet, make your loops again, just like we did in this round. So continue through your third round, join me at the end of your third round, and I'll show you how we pull it all together. Nearly done here, just another single crochet in these last few stitches. And we'll join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet of the round, right here. Into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, and through for a slip stitch. Fasten that off, and then let's take a look at our work. So as we can see, we've got all of these really kind of wrinkly loops happening. And the problem with that too is that since these loops are so wrinkly, we're not getting the maximum height 
from our loops to create our knots. Now what I did was on this side, I lightly blocked the loops open. So I pinned this to my project, putting some pins in the actual granny square, and then I took pins and pulled here. So since I had a pin here, it wasn't stretching these stitches too much. So I was able to lift up these loops a lot higher than they would be on the unblocked side. Now we can put our knots in them to create this knotted fringe. Now let me show you how we'll make our knotted fringe. So you're gonna grab your three loops here and we're gonna make an overhand knot. So bring those loops together at the base, bring them over your finger, and then we want to slip those three loops through the loop here. Take your time, pull them through. Now as you're tightening, push that loop down towards the base of your work. Then I can grab each of those loops to pull it a little bit higher. We don't wanna over tighten this, but you do want it nice and firm just like that. Let me show you again. Grab your three loops, collect them at the base, just like this. So I just kind of fold them in half to collect them together, bringing them over the top of my finger and pulling those three loops through this loop I just created, going slowly just to make sure I get all three of those loops through, just like that. And now I'll start pushing the knot towards the base and then grab each of the three loops to pull it up a bit higher. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's so cute. So that's one side done and I'm gonna go finish the rest. And after one final blocking, you can see that our tied tassels are all done and they're so stinking cute. There's just something about having this on a project, watching TV and just kind of playing with these tassels mindlessly, expelling some energy. This is definitely one of my favorites from the bunch because it's so fun and so different. Just be careful. I wouldn't put this on a baby baby blanket, maybe an older child that wouldn't have any issue getting little fingers and toes in here. So what do you think of these border patterns? Which is your favorite and what would you use it for? Let me know down in the comments and also check the description for links to all of the patterns I mentioned here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.